Hello and welcome to JXJ Aviation. In this video, we will be looking at the general procedure and requirements for starting a jet engine and how an aircraft's engine is started. I will be showing you this on an Airbus A320neo aircraft. NEO stands for new engine option. Basically, there are two new engine options for the Airbus, a Pratt & Whitney NEO and a CFM NEO. This is the cockpit of the aircraft. As you can see, the displays are not on, the radios are off and on the overhead panel there are no lights or indications. This is because the aircraft is not electrically supplied. To monitor the start of the engines, we need the displays. So the aircraft needs electric power. If we look at the overhead panel, there is one light on which is on the external power switch. This means that the external power is connected but it is not supplying any power. If we turn on the external power, the aircraft will be electrically supplied, which means all the panel lights and the displays will come on as we can see here. For starting the engines, fuel is required. Fuel is sent to the engines by fuel pumps, so we need to turn on all the fuel pumps. For starting the engines, high pressure air is required. We can take high pressure air from the APU. For starting the APU, first the batteries have to be turned on. Now we can put the APU master switch to on and then the start switch. We will wait for the APU to start completely which we will know by the change in the indication on the switch. Since we require bleed air from the APU, we set the APU bleed switch to on. Now that the basic conditions for starting the engines are met, let's look at how the engines are started. First, the thrust levers must be set at zero or idle power. This ensures that the aircraft does not move forward as soon as the engines are started. The engine mode selector is set to ignition start and the master lever is set to on. This represents the pressure of the air being supplied to the air starter unit and this is the start valve which is currently open. If we see on the upper display, the N2 or the rotation speed of the HP shaft increases since it is directly connected with the starter turbine. After a certain value, fuel is introduced which can be seen under fuel flow. As the fuel starts burning, in the combustion chamber, the exhaust gas temperature or EGT increases, which is also shown here. This causes an increase in the airflow across the engine, which causes the low pressure shaft to rotate and the rotation speed or N1 begins to increase. After the engine is stabilized, we can start engine 1 by setting engine 1 master switch to on. On the display, we see the same indications. Increase in N2 followed by the fuel flow indication, increase in EGT and finally increase in N1. On the lower display, 
we get some other information from the engines such as the quantity of fuel used, the oil quantity, the oil pressure and the oil temperature. Let's go back to the overhead panel. Since the engines are started, bleed air can be taken from the engines. So we do not require bleed air from the APU. The APU bleed switch can be set to off. The APU is also not required so the APU can also be turned off. The engines will also supply electrical power to the aircraft so the external power can also be set to off. Now the aircraft is all set to taxi to the runway for takeoff. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, do subscribe and you can continue watching some of my other videos as well.